right, so in this video, we are going to show you how to use the FOF exclusive stitches. And the first one we are going to start with is the free standing lace designs, which I have at the bottom of this pinafore or apron on this little doll dress. So you can see how these stitches actually come right off of the edge of the fabric and is an actual free standing lace. So to do that, you do want to make sure that you're matching your thread top and bottom. So I do not have, this is a rayon purple thread I've been using, I don't have a bobbin in it. So I'm going to wind a bobbin, but because I already have the machine threaded, I'm going to wind the bobbin through the needle. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my, my thread under my foot, make sure you have a metal foot on, and over here on the right side, you'll see there's this little groove in here. Let's see if I can show you that just a little bit better. So it's actually right in here. You'll see where I'm putting my finger. I'm going to go put the thread directly in here, okay? And then I'm going to come up here to the top, right up here, and then I'm going to put it onto the top of the metal piece right here, okay? All right, so there's a metal piece right here, right on the top, and I'm going to bring it over to wind the bobbin. Let's see if I can get a better view for you. So again, I'm just on the top. There's a little little groove on top there. I'm going to bring this over, and then I'm going to take my bobbin with the fof up. I am going to put it through the hole of my bobbin with the, the fof up. Purple thread, purple bobbin. That was a good match, wasn't it? Okay, and then I'm going to bring it right on over to, come on camera, work with me. Okay, so right over to here, get with the fof up. Okay, I'm going to push this over just like we were doing before, and then down on my screen, it is going to ask me to wind my bobbin. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to let it wind for a bit. Okay, so I don't need much. So I'm going to probably stop about there because I don't need very much. And then I will, so I have not much on there. So I'm going to pull my thing over and come over here and cut my bobbin thread. At that point, my thread releases. It's just now down on the bottom of my machine, and I'm going to go ahead and bring it over here. Now I could spool it back, or I could just, I'm just going to cut it. Okay, so now I'm going to insert, sorry, I just cut it, so here it is, cut. So I'm going to insert my new bobbin, just like how I showed you in the inductionary video, and I'll show you how to do the lace stitch. All right. So on my machine, let's say I did not know where to find the lace stitches and maybe I don't know how to use them. So I'm going to go up to my little instruction manual on the top left. Give that a touch. Thank you. And then usually it's going to look like this when you come up. And I'm going to go to the yellow one which says techniques and tutorials. And in there I'm going to go to sewing techniques and exclusive stitch techniques. So these are the FOF exclusives and they'll show me where the single ribbon, double ribbon, triple ribbon, the stacking stitches, floating stitches, floating stitches joined, radiant stitches, and then the lace stitches. So I'm going to touch the lace stitches. It's going to automatically open up to my menu here and it's going to tell me about the lace stitches and I'm going to come up here. It's going to tell me that I want the new bi-level foot with IDT that came with the with the machine, that's the one with the flange in the middle, okay, that has that little different kind of cockeyed that I showed you in the introductionary video. Okay, so that's the fun I'm going to need. I'm also going to want to have my project, and I'm going to do it very small today, that has a finished seam on it, and then water soluble stabilizer. And I'm using the Fabric Solve by Sulky today. There's a lot of different ones um, out there. This is one I just happen to have today. Then the next thing it will tell me about is to load the stitch. Well, if I touch the content menu, which is right here, it will show me that these six stitches are the stitches that apply to this technique that I'm seeing the instructions on. So I'm going to just press number three, because I can, no other reason. And I'm going to go back to the instructions, and then I'll flip up, and then I can come here and watch the video. And it's going to show me to get my fabric, to get my stabilizer and it's going to show me the stabilizers back there and it's going to have me fold the fabric so you know you want a raw edge so I'm just going to be showing you guys with a, a finish edge so I'm going to show you guys with a finish edge change to the bi-level foot engage the IDT and then it stops because it wants me to do all that so I'm going to pause the video and get that all done 
Okay, so we're back, and now what I'm going to do is if I want to see the next set of instructions, I'm going to hit the X down here on the bottom right, scroll up to the next set of instructions, and I could read it, or I could just press the video, and the video will continue from where it stopped. And it showed me to line the flange up with the edge of the foot so it can do the lace work. And it's going to continue doing the lace work down. And <laughs> we got a talkative of iron in here. <laughs> and so it's going to, pretty long video to show us to sew all the way down. But that's okay. <clears throat> and yada, 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 yada. I could just grab it and make it go forward a little bit and it, that's what it's going to show me. Okay? So that's what we're going to do. All right. Sorry about that. So uh, they're actually am marking the stabilizer, not the fabric. So I'm going to keep going here. So they're marking the, st the stabilizer so that when you put the fabric on top of the stabilizer where you want it, you can fold back the fabric to the correct line. Um, you could also mark up the back side of your fabric if you wanted to. There's a couple different techniques to do, do this, but this is done on a folded fabric right sides together, okay? And they want you to, to do the IDT. So all I'm going to do is just take my fabric that I have right now, just the fabric I have right now with the stabilizer, my pretty side is up, and just to show you one of these, I'm just going to fold it in half the long way here, okay? You just want to try to fold it straight. Okay, and just going to do a finger press. Now with the video here that we've been showing you, you could go to the next set of instructions, but if you're like me, I don't read the instructions, I watch the video. I probably should read the instructions, maybe there's more there, but I find the videos are very intuitive. So down here on the bottom left, we have what looks like a note card, and I could touch that, it'll unlock the whole video. So I don't have to go and do all the videos in the segments. I could tell it, I want to see it all from this one location. And I'm going to keep going here. And it's going to tell me I come in and put the flange right next to the fold, just like I did with the lace, and I stitch it down. So I'm going to pause that right now, and we're going to do that. All right, so we're going to bring this in. I'm going to press the pressure foot. Oh! <laughs> Hello, camera. Push the pressure of it there on one and then twice so I get in that hover mode so I can put my foot right where I want it and again it's right up to the flange of the fold. And then I'm going to go ahead and start to sew. And then I'm just going to sew this all the way down. Oh, some of my bob is low because I didn't put a whole bunch into it. But I'm going to sew this all the way down and I want it to, um, I, I want to watch my fold onto the flange just like I did before. Don't worry about the needle. The needle will do its job. Just sew this all the way down. Now I'm getting to the end. I'm going to use my scissor cut to tie it off. And I actually went off. There we go. That's okay. So let's scissor cut and cut, cut it. So this is what I have so far. So half of it stitched on the stabilizer and half is stitched on the fold of the fabric. Now if we come back over here to the video and continue the video here, the next thing it's going to do is it's going to tell us to take it out and pull open the fabric. Okay? And then it's going to have us, uh, once we pull it open, it's going to then have us fold and do again in case you want to do another folding stitch. So that's how you do multiple folding stitches. Is you just start with one and you work your way over either left to right or right to left, depending on which way you want to go. And you just will keep folding it open and give it a good pull and then fold for your next stitch and then stitch it again. Okay, so if I was to bring it out here, here we are with this one, so I just would open it up. You see, you just will give it a nice, nice pull to open this up. And then from the front, it looks like a very nice independent sewn stitch, when on the back it truly is a connecting stitch. And then you could do many rows of them. My plan with this is to make a model for the store where I have floating stitches and candle wicking and ribbon and all sorts of things I could do with this that just to show the different stitches. So that is a floating stitch. The next ones we are getting ready to do is we are going to show you the three ribbon stitches. So there is single ribbon stitches here, which we have made the sample in the store of all the single ribbon stitches. There are double ribbon stitches that we have this sample. And I only have a little sample of the triple, one of the triples, okay? So we're going to start with a single and work our way up to the triple. Let's show you how to do these. 
All right, so we're going now to do the ribbon stitches. And so this is one we've done on cork that I showed in the introductionary video of uh, that we did by a candle wicking stitch and a stacking stitch right here. So this is a, a, a wallet that we had as a class in here and we did uh, decorative stitches on the cork fabric. So we're going to show you the single ribbon stitches first. So the first thing we need to do is we need to close out this menu, minus this menu if you have it open, this one right here. Then we go back into my book or my instructions, and I'm now gonna select the single ribbon stitch right here. To see the next part of the video, we're just going to go ahead and close it out. Again, fold it up or swing it up, and let's go ahead and watch this next one. So now with the ribbon placed where it wants, it wants me to go, go again, which it will sew the other side and stop and for me to twist the thread. And then I press go again, and it wants me to go and start, and then it wants me to twist, I'm sorry, the ribbon, not the thread, the ribbon. And then I twist the ribbon again. And it looks like I just keep doing that all the way down. So let's go ahead and show you that. So we're here back to the machine, and again, I have my ribbon left to right with the bulk of it coming down here towards the right. And I have my, it all the way up to my needle. I'm going to press the go key, and it'll stitch. And then when it starts with my needle down, I'm going to take the ribbon, I'm going to turn it, and I'm going to bring it up to my needle again. Now with the line, you want to make sure the line stays visually straight. This will happen if we, when we start to turn, and that's why we want that line, is to visually help keep it straight for us. And so you also don't want to pull so tight that you're pulling up the fabric on this side. So you don't want to start doing this where the fabric is raising. You want the fabric to stay straight, taut, and up to the ribbon taut and up to the needle. And then press go. And then when it stops again, I'm going to turn it over itself again and go under the foot up to the needle again. And then just hold it here and then press the go. So you can see why the go key is so important. Um, if I was doing this by my foot control, it would get confusing about when, when did it stop. Did I stop it or did it stop? And after you do this for a long stretch, it does get confusing. The start stop key makes total sense. And then fold again and then just keep working your way down. And as you keep your working your way down, just make sure you're keeping that line as straight as you can. That's the big important part of it. And then just keep going. We'll see you towards the end. So here it is done. Now I can show you at the very top here. See, I can see a little bit of my stitching. And then right down, where'd it go? Um, there's another one right here. This one right here is not stitched very well. Those are two areas I did not keep the ribbon very taut, very tight at all. You see how that one actually folded a little different, where these other ones are nice and crisp and folded. So you do have to work on tensioning. Um, it has been a little while since I've done a ribbon stitch, but I uh, once I get going on them, I just want to put them on everything. So that's with the quarter inch ribbon there. Again, on the wallet I did, this is the same stitch right here. It's very hard to see the cream, but you can see it, but I did a 1 8 inch ribbon so that you can see a little bit better how that performed. Then also, if we look at my single ones here that I have, you could do them again with one eighth or one, one eighth or one quarter. So um, let's see here. Here is that same stitch right there with the quarter inch. Okay, see how it occupies, the ribbon occupies the stitch more. Then if I come over here in the gold, this stitch is the same stitch, but with the one eighth. So you see more of the stitch and less of the ribbon. Then over here, I actually did a quarter inch and an eighth ribbon together. And so every other turn, you get the eighth and the quarter, then just the quarter, the eighth and the quarter and the quarter. So these are the different single ribbon stitches that are on this machine right now. Okay. So kind of fun. I like to make these little samples that I um, have finished. So I actually keep them by my machine so that I have them to uh, flip through so I can see my di different stitches and what helps me design what I want to do and gave me a great way to practice keeping these straight and keep them going. Not everyone does this, but I like to do this kind of stuff because then even if you decide to upgrade later, if the machine still has ribbon stitches, these samples still work. You just would then do a sample of the newer stitches. So that's something I like to do, and I keep adding to my, my stitch collection.
The next thing we are going to do now is I'm going to use the 1 8 ribbon and we are going to work on doing one of these double ribbons. Okay, so these are the double ribbons that are available on this machine as well. So you're going to be re weaving two ribbons, single one ribbon at a time, but the effect will give you two ribbons though. So technically you're weaving two at a time, but one moves at a time. Okay, so let's show you how this is done. All right, let's go get the uh, video for the next one. So I'm going to close this video out and minus this down up here. Come on. I'm having a hard time hitting this one. I keep hitting the one behind it. There we go. That's because I'm over to the left, really far from the screen to give the camera room. So I don't think I'm hitting them where I'm supposed to be hitting them. Because <laughs> my machine always reacts better to me than this. So I'm going to go into the structure video up here. And again, I'm going to stay in the sewing tutorial techniques and tutorials, sewing techniques, and this time I want the double ribbon, which is the second one in there. And again, now this time it's going to tell me it's suitable for one eighth to one quarter inch ribbon. It's also going to tell me the same stuff. I need exactly the same stuff. And then we we'll open up the content menu, and these are the the decorative stitches for the ribbon itself here. Um, Again, the ones that I feel that are the best ones to start with to because they have the less movement would be like number one or number five, ones that don't really go too far outside that nine millimeter. So I'm going to go ahead and select number five because I really do like it. And then uh, go ahead and get your 2A foot on, and then we're going to come back to the instructions, and I'm going to go get my sample to do my drawing on. All right, so I'm using my sample from earlier that I did some floating stitches on, and I decided to put the ribbon stitches between them. So I wrote, I drew two lines, they're not perfectly even, but that's okay, because this is just to show you how to do it. So I'm going to come up here uh, to where it says draw the line and all that to give me the video, but that's where it's going to have us, I believe that's where it has us start. Um, yeah, I'm going to show you the first video. So sometimes I jump to the second video, but here's the first video again, having us draw the line, put the stabilizer in back, So the videos are very consistent, which is good. They never assume that you know know what you're supposed to do from watching it before. So that is okay, because if you're always watching one kind of video for like the double ribbons, but you never go in and watch this, the triple ribbon, they're not going to assume and put the, the stabilizer information on the first video for the single rib ribbon. I know that was confusing, but every technique has the same setup of information, which is great. They're never going to assume on you whether or not you know. But I do see I could have skipped to the second video because I already know that I have to have my two-way foot, my IDT off, my fabric with my stabilizer. So, but I couldn't remember if they started showing you the technique yet, so that's why I played that video. So let's go to video two, and then it's going to have us come in, and it's going to have us start, and it will stitch, and then it has us put the ribbon in. And it has us start again, and it's going to stitch and have us stop. So I do want to point out that any time I have noticed that any time the foot falls on the left side of the line, you're going to put the ribbon in coming down towards the left. If it falls on the right side of the line, you're going to put the ribbon in going down towards the right. That's just something I have noticed that's been very consistent. And... Um, Hopefully they stay consistently since I just pointed that out. So let's go ahead and come over to the machine and let's go this far. All right, so I'm going to come in on the line here. I'm going to put my foot down and I'm going to go ahead and press. Let's get you guys this a little bit. There we go. So we're going to press the go key and it stops on the left. So that means my ribbon's going to come in here and come to the left. Hopefully I have enough room to put these in. And I press the go again. Now it stops to the right. Now let's see what the video says there. So I do love using this video to help me interact so that I can get every single step. It's fantastic. And so I don't have to remember, the, the machine will. So I close the video to open up the third one. And now it's having me put in the other ribbon. Again, it's on the right hand side, so going towards the right. And I press the go. And then it's going to have me fold over. Okay, and then we go, and then it stops. And that's when it's going to have us take the top one. So let's go ahead and continue. Oops, I restarted it. Sorry. 
I forgot that step, but that's okay. See it again. So it's going to put that in, and it's going to have us fold over, and then it's going to have us go and stop. And now I'm going to tell it to continue the video by pressing this bottom left hand corner little note card. I'm going to then say, okay, show me the rest. So I can see the top one folds over, then I press the go, and then when it comes to the left, I fold it to the left, then I press the go, and when it goes over to the right, I bring the top one over to the right. So we'll, we'll go over this as we go. So let's go ahead and bring you over to the machine and show you this. So now it's stopped on the right hand side, so I'm going to bring in my ribbon over here so it's going up to the right hand side, and then I'm going to press the go key. Now, it's on the left hand side, which means I got to fold my ribbon on the right over top of itself and over to the left. So I mean over top, I'm folding it this way. Okay, make sure my line is straight. I'm up to the needle and I press the go. Now when it stops on the right hand side, I, I have two ribbons over here. So I always take the top one. Okay, so I'm gonna take the top one and fold it over and bring it over to the right up to the needle. Again, try to keep that nice and straight. I don't think I'm doing good on that. <laughs> now when it goes to the left, that means I have to bring the one to the right over to the left. Okay, because I'm always going toward folding towards where the needle is. That folded, there we go. Get that straight. Now it's on the right, so I take the top one on the left hand side, there we go, the top one, and we turn it underneath to get it up underneath and up to that needle and press go. Okay, now it's on the left, so I'm going to take my left, my right one here and fold it over to the left. on the right so I'm going to take my top one and fold it over to go to there I am going crooked I can see I'm going crooked yep I'm really going crooked but that's okay you guys are seeing the weaving technique so I'm going to just stop it for now because I am going way crooked but you can see how the weaving technique is going so what it should look like if I was sewing straight in front is it would look like this one right here. Okay, so it does have those long gated stretches like we've been doing. So these are all the double ones. I will say they take a little bit more practice to keep straight and sit in front of your machine. I'm not sitting in front of my machine, so I'm sewing crooked. So if you sit in front of your machine, these will come out much, much better. The next one we're going to go ahead and show you is the triple ribbon. So the triple ribbon, I really like it because it's basically braiding. That's all it is, it's just braiding. So it, it's a really nice, pretty, it's hard for you guys to see this. It's just a really nice, pretty braid. And I can see doing this anywhere you want a bold ribbon, anything you want to really show off your, your ribbon. So this one has a little bit more uh, ribbon selection indicated to each of the stitches. So what I mean by that is when we did the single and we did the double, they were saying that we could do a one eighth up to a one quarter, so two millimeter to five millimeter ribbon on any of them. Okay. Now, when you do the triple, they are designed for different ribbons, and you do need to watch how you're selecting them. But the machine will tell you. So let's show you that. All right. So here we are back, and this video is done. So let's go ahead and close this one. We're going to close this as well, and let's go back into our instruction manual on the top left or the book. And again, now we want the triple one. So we're in the techniques and tutorials of the Help Center, sewing techniques, and we want the triple ribbon. So now, on this first page, it's going to give us a little bit more information about ribbon sizes versus stitches. So down here, let's see if I can get you guys focused just a little bit better. Okay, so down here, stitch one is for three millimeter stitches, uh, three millimeter ribbons. Number two is for five millimeter ribbons. 3 is for a 3 millimeter, 4 is a 3 sixteenth. so see how it's giving you all that? It's also giving you the equivalent of the, um, of the uh, size, so 
And number three is for a three millimeter, which is one eighth ribbon. That's the one we're going to do is we're going to do number three because that's the, I already have the one eighth ribbon cut. So I'm going to go into the content and I'm going to say I want number three because that's the one that has the ribbon size I want. It's also very tight. Number one, we could probably do it with that, but it's more spread out. It's very wide and I want nice, narrow and tight. Okay. Which is what well, I just get the look I want. And then I'm going to fold up, and again, it's going to tell me all the same things I need before. And then I'm actually going to come up and skip this first video because I know it's going to tell me what it has been telling me. I'm going to go to video two. And see, it's going to tell me to go ahead and put in the fabric and start. So there we go. Then I'm going to start. And we'll stop, and I put in that first ribbon. And I start. And then it stops. Now I'm going to tell it to go a little bit farther. So I'm going to tell it to play more of the video by touching the left hand side here, that little note card. I'm going to continue so I can see that now I put in my second ribbon and when I press start again and it stops a third time over here to the left, I'm going to put in my third ribbon. And right there I'm going to go ahead and stop. So I see how to put in the ribbons. It's the top one on the left first, then the one going to the right second, and then the bottom one on the left third. So now that I see that, we're going to come to the machine and do it. All right, here we are at the machine, and I'm going to try to sew a little bit more straight, because looking at this, you can see my stitches in the middle here of when I was doing the double. I <laughs> My camera stand is just too wide for me to sit around, so I was even sewing my straight lines crooked. So I'm going to try not to do that. I'm going to try to be a little bit better this time for you guys. So I'm going to find my straight and put, put my line on the middle of the foot, and I'm going to press the go. And it's going to stop on the left. Now remember, I said if it stops on the left, that means the ribbon goes in towards the left bottom. So I'm going to go ahead and put that in. Okay, so the bulk of it's going this way. And my scrap is up there, or my tail. All the way up to the needle, keep my line straight, and press the go. And now it stops on the right. Okay, so that means my ribbon's going to go towards the right. So I'll get that all the way up to the needle, press go stops on the left so that's when I get my third ribbon in okay so once you get comfortable with these they go pretty easily and it's just practice that's why I make those samples because you get lots of practice then and then we go okay so now what do I do I'm back on the right let's see what the video says I already know what's going to do because I have done this, but I want I want you guys to really get used to using this video as your asset because it is basically your instructor when you're at home and it's like 10 o'clock at night and your dealer's closed. And so this is why they put these helpful videos in for you so you can get these, these questions answered and learn how to do this. So I'm going to go ahead and continue the video here. And now when it stitches to the right, which I have just done, I fold the top one over. Then I press go, it's going to go over to the left, needle down, and pull the top one over to the left. Every, <clears throat> every time we fold now, we're always going to take the top ribbon to the direction it stops. That's a big secret with the, um, the braiding. Okay, so <clears throat> let me get a drink of water and we'll start showing you this. All right, so it's over to the right now. Let me just raise my foot to make sure. Yep, it's over to the right. Oops, okay. And I'm going to take my top one and I'm going to fold it over itself and take it to the right. Try to keep my line. That's the other thing. This one, number three, is a really easy one because it never moves off of this um, center line, which is very nice. So then I'm going to press the go key. So I come over to the left. Okay, so you take the top one on the right and fold it to the left. Keeping it nice and tight, keeping everything straight. And then I press the go. Okay, now it's on the right. Take the top one on the left and fold it over to the right. So it's just like braiding. If you ever braided hair as a child, it's exactly the same thing. Nothing's changed. Just the only thing that I like to use the video for really is to um, help me uh, get it started. Now I'm having a hard time getting this ribbon to fold over itself, so if you have a trouble doing that, raise your pressure foot. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this key here, okay, so 
There you go, so you can see it better. This key here, I'm going to raise the pressure foot. Now my pressure foot's nice and high. I only do this if I have trouble getting the ribbon folded, okay? So now that it's nice and high, I can fold this better and get it over. I don't always recommend that, but I was having trouble for some reason folding the ribbon at that moment. So I'm going to go ahead and do pressure foot down, make sure I'm all okay, and then I'm going to press go. Okay, and then take the top one here and fold it over to the right and you just keep going and you're always moving the top ribbon okay so go ahead and keep doing this and we'll see you at the end so I went a little ways because I want to be sure that I show you guys how to do a radiant stitch so but this is the the, the braiding stitch. And so as long as you keep it nice and tight in there, you'll find that it will braid really, really nicely. Now I do have a sample that I did do here on purpose to show you what happens if you don't keep it tight. See how it's not covering my, at the beginning it's not covering my stitches, and then down here it's still not really covering my stitches. That's what happens when you don't keep it nice and tight. And then once I corrected myself, the braid looked really, really good. So this is when I, I was, it was hard for me to make it foul up, but I, I, I made it foul up so I could show you. So as long as you keep the ribbon nice and taut, but not to the point you're pulling it, it'll give you a nice tight braid and cover all the stitches. Again, it takes a little bit of practice, but by the time you do one whole column, you, you'll be good. And if you start getting confused about how to twist after a while and you're finding that you're twisting wrong, start over, okay? Just start over, start the video over from the beginning by just scrolling back up to the beginning of the instructions. And just remember that with the triple, once you get them all started, that it goes left, right, left to get them all in there. And then every time you fold, if it, you always are taking the side with two and folding, taking the top one. And then when you have the side with two, you take the top one and it just keeps going down. Once you realize that little secret, it goes beautifully, okay? So that's a lot of fun. The next one I wanted to show you that they have is called the Radiant Stitches. So the Radiant Stitches are these uh, wonderful large stitches that are normally sewn on a curve like in a seam or something. I think they're made for garment sewers, but I love them because I think they give a lot of dimensions, a lot of real fun, fun uh, different options of things you could do. But uh, you could sew them on a curve, sew them in a seam, but if you're going to sew them like a decorative stitch like I did on all these, you do want to go back and finish them with a finishing stitch of some sort, which all these were done with a satin stitch on them. And then even my curved one over here was, that I have at the very top up here. But they are meant to be sewn so you can sew them into a seam, like on a garment or in a pillow, um, so that you don't have to do this decorative stitch. They just come, come right directly out of the seam. These are a lot of fun, and let me show you how these work, the radiant stitches. So to, to do the radiant stitches, and we want to see the video again, remember to come up here to the uh, little book at the top, and again, the techniques and tutorials, sewing techniques, exclusive stitches okay then right here in the exclusive stitches here's the radiant stitches so you'll notice how it's on a curve these were designed again to be sewn into a seam to give a stitch coming out of a seam which is really cool you can use them as a straight as well but they do need a little bit of finessing if you're going to use them straight um, I can see doing a pillow with just a whole bunch of circles around it, doing these radiant stitches in full circles I think that'd be fun so if I go again to the radiant stitches, remember it brings up the instructions, but then to pick the stitch, I gotta go into content, and then here are all the stitches. Now, let's say you don't wanna get, go in and get it that way. Let's say you do know how to use a stitch, which I will show you how to use a stitch, and you want to go get it the traditional way through your selection menu on the top. Let me just close this window down. If we go into the selection menu on the top right, and I scroll through, now I've been going through the book the whole time to get these stitches. In here, category eight, which is techniques, here are all the stitches I have been showing you on this video. And down here, we do have the radiant stitches in 8.6. So second to the bottom one. And there they are. The difference of pulling them up this way versus pulling them up through the book is this way won't bring up the video instructions. Where through the little book at the top on the main screen window, it would bring up the uh, the videos for you. So, 
I have minus it. It's still right here. So the video, the book video looks like a little booklet right here with a with a P on it, a little book with a P on it, and that will reopen up my instructions here. I am going to go ahead and just pick number one, and then I'm going to go back to instructions. And so do, so a decorative stitch along a curved line, the stitches will be spread out equally along the line, is what these are for. So it's telling you about it. It's telling us what we need. Now we need to go to the 2A foot, <clears throat> and we need a decorative thread and regular bobbin fabric, and of course you need a marker to mark. And then here is the video, and that video again is showing us how to set up and everything. So I'm going to skip that video and come down to the next one. Now they're telling us how to load a stitch. But now we go to this video, and it's going to show you that we are going to follow the center of the foot on there, turn it. Then we're going to sew it that way, then turn it, put the center of the foot on the line. Then when it stops, turn it, and you go again. So you just keep going straight and sideways, straight and sideways, or curve and sideways, I guess you should say. So... <clears throat> What we're going to do is I'm going to get set up and then we will show you this in person of some things you can do. Okay, so I've attached my 2A foot here and I want to point out that you have these lines on the side here. So let me take this off. So you do on the 2A foot. There we go. We have the two lines on the sides. So you have a line here and a line over here on the two sides. And then you have a longer line in the middle. Those are the three lines we're going to use for this, this, these radiant stitches. Now I went ahead for, um, I, I went ahead and select stitch six. I decided to change my mind just for timing purposes for sewing this out. Um, they do relatively so fast, but I don't like to have these videos too long for us. So <clears throat> by selecting the stitch through the book, it on the book with the videos, it automatically selected my needle down key for me, which is really nice. If you go through the techniques category through the uh, selection menu, the other way I showed you, you may have to select that needle down on a mat, uh, for you, yourself, okay? You'll know if it's lit up. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put the center line of the foot on the line right here. And I am going to use my start stop key. And we'll go and sew a little bit in a stop and then I'm going to turn. And when I turn, I'm now going to use my two side lines here to keep it straight with my curve, okay? And I press go. <clears throat> Let's see, because I'm sewing away from it, I did not get directly on the line the first time, but that's okay. That's totally fine. There we go. And then put back with the center line on it. That time I did better. That's what happens when you have to sew around a camera. <laughs> and so if I press my pressure foot down and twice, I get that hover mode. Remember that from the first video? <clears throat> now that way you can see exactly where you're at. Notice that they don't always line up in the exact same spot. And that is because these are designed to be done on a curve. Um, that is correct. Every icon I've sat down and do it on, they all do it the same. And it's just for removing it onto the curve. Now this next one I'm going to do a little bit different. So let's say I'm not going to do this inside a seam. So this next one, I am going to go ahead, do my straight line on the curve again, <clears throat> but this time I'm going to decide to go the other way, because I've decided this is not going to be on a seam. This is going to be a decorative stitch I'm going to use. So I'm just trying to get my two side lines lined up where I need them to be, and then I'll do it this way. So then, because I made that choice, I am now going to make sure that every fourth one will be turned the opposite way. So go ahead and have fun with this and I'll show you how to fi finish this because you see this is not how you're going to want your decorative stitch because it's not pretty between them. So let me get this going and then I will show you how we will fix that. So here we have the stitches I just did and every fourth one I twisted another way because you know why not? You can. Um, but before we show you how to finish these, I have right here, I have tested out all of my stitches. I like to do this when I get a new machine, is sew all my stitches. And down here, I did this one 
where I did it, I twisted it every other way. But you notice I have a finishing stitch over the top, and I like doing a satin stitch. Um, I even did that up here when I did a curved one, is I did a satin stitch, and that's what I'm going to show you on here. So let's go to the machine here. Okay, so on the machine, we are going to go ahead and just minus out the video because we're just going to get, get that out of there. Okay, we're going to go to our selection menu. And in our selection menu, we want to be in utilities, number one. And you'll find you have several zigzags. Only one of them really is appropriate for a satin stitch. And it's actually this one right here, number 12. And the reason why this one is appropriate over all the other satin stitches is if you look at this one right here, you will notice that number six, seven, and eight, they actually zag down every time they stitch. Number 12 actually will sew across and then come down. So if I show you down here, you can see that just a little bit, a little bit better how it goes. Well, if my camera will focus, there we go. How it goes across and then down, across and then down. That is a true satin stitch for Apple K or for what we're going to do, a finishing stitch. So how I got this was I just simply touch the stitch I was interested in, not a long hold. If I touch it, then it will show me that, that information down here and tell me about it. If I do a long hold, it will select it. So now that I have touched it, I now need to press load to get it onto my screen here, okay? So now I am going to open up my stitch edit because I didn't keep them up on my screen, like I showed you in the first video. I'm going to bring down my width to, I think I want about a, maybe a three millimeter, maybe three and 3.3, something like that, anything like that. Then this right here, my stitch length, is how I get down to the satiny uh, setting that I want. And I'm going to go down to a 0.4, which is the slow, um, actually I think I'll do 0.5 a 0.5, which is the second to lowest it will go, okay? And now I'm going to come over to my machine and we'll stitch this down. Okay, so here I am at my machine. And again, I'm going to use the center on the line that I had drawn. And I know I have some places that are kind of wider apart, but with the, the three and a half, I believe I'm going to hit those just fine. So I'm just going to stay on the line I've drawn and then I'm going to go ahead and press go. my scissors which I looked up to do that I see I feel crooked when I did that see we all do it and oh not too bad but now you can see how you can finish it so now they look like this so when you're doing it on the straight line you sometimes need to uh, just twist the foot a little bit to make it hit that line the best you can on the radiant when you're doing the actual radiant itself um, but pretty much they are the same so the next thing I'm going to show you the last one in this techniques category is the stacking stitches and the stacking stitches are two stitches that are used together for you to be able to stack them on top and you can use different threads different colors and it will uh, give a more uh, dimension to your stitch so I'm going to sit up for that next all right, so this time we're just going to go directly to the stitch. I'm not going to show you the videos. I do think you guys have got on, you know, really know how to go get those videos. So I'm going to go into my selection menu up here. And in the selection menu, again, we've been working in the techniques. That's what this whole video has been about, is the techniques. And uh, the stacking stitches are 8.4, so I'm going to do the stacking stitches. So the stacking stitches, here they are. And how they work is they work in tandem with each other. So you'll notice that they're boxed together, that one and two is boxed together, three and four, five and six, and on and on and on, all the way to 29 and 30. So that is how they were designed to work together. Can you mix them up? Of course you can. It just, you may get a different effect though than what they were originally meant to. And can you use them independently? Of course you can do that too. These are your stitches. You can play with them any way you want. But I'm going to show you today how they were meant to be done. Um, but part of having a fabulous machine like this is playing and coming up with new ideas and new, new uh, techniques and stuff by uh, you know, playing with it a bit. 
So I'm going to do the first set, the one and two. So I'm going to go ahead and get number one, and it's going to come up, and here it is. And it is a maxi stitch, so it is going to tell, tell me I need to change to foot eight. And I do want to make sure that I leave a good enough tail when I start so I know where first stitch was. So let's bring over to the machine and show you this. So this is foot eight. It looks very uh, similar to actually your uh, foot two but it's much bigger. It's a very much larger foot and it has more markings on it, but on the back it has different heights on it. This is to help hold down your fabric while it moves side to side as well as front and back. And again, maxi stitches can sew two to three inches in size. So this stitch alone is a little more than an inch wide just for this stitch. And so it's outside the nine millimeters. I'm gonna make sure I do have a good enough tail here, okay, just so that I can definitely know where first stitch is. And you can draw a line to help keep it uh, visually straight. But when you when you do this, you want to basically let it feed, but you need to be ready to just do finger touch, uh, fingertip corrections, okay? So I did slow down my, my speed on the side of my machine so I can use my start stop. Because that last half of stitch went a little fast for me. And you see how it's moving side to side? It's actually moving this way, okay? And so I'm just trying to keep it visually straight. I, I have my left hand underneath it over here on the left side, and then I have my fingers here ready to adjust if needed. So let's go ahead and just sew this down, and then I'll show you how to add the second stitch. All right, so I went ahead and threaded up my machine with another color, because um, I do like making mine two different colors. And what I'm going to do, instead of going to the selection menu on top, I'm going to pick, do my quick pick menu down here. And it will take it a second to catch up to where I was. And in green, I could see the stitch I was just doing. So now I'm going to press the second stitch of, this, of the pair. And I like to keep my window clean, so I'm going to close that. And now what I'm going to do is at the top, you'll see there's a green plus on this. And that's out at the start of all of your stitches. And it's telling you basically where stitch one is. I need to line up that stitch one with the stitch one of the prior stitch. So let's do that. Okay, just for filming purposes, I'm going to take off my foot. Um, you, would not, you would not sew this way. But basically, I left this tail so I could see where stitch one was. So at the top of this tail, I would, with my foot on, lower this down and sink it right into that first stitch, okay? So that's where I'm going. So I'm gonna go ahead and put my foot back on. Sometimes, sometimes we just have to like look under the foot and I'm going to go ahead and where I showed you I was doing it. If you need to, you could also take your your pen, your water soluble pen, and put a dot there so you know exactly where it's at. Now again, I'm going to try to keep it straight. But I do want to point out to you that as this stitches, the hearts may not line up all the time exactly the way you think they should. This is a very artistic stitch. It's um, not meant to be perfect. It's to, you know, it has variety to it. It has different things going on. And so don't get too hung up on it being perfect because that's not what these are for. They're just another kind of decorative embellished stitch with dimensions by being able to stack up. So I again am just going to kind of try to keep it as straight as I can because as long as I do that, and my job is to keep it as straight as I can, it will do a really good job. And we just sew this one all the way down. towards the end here so I'm going to go ahead and do my immediate tie off so just a reminder of what that was from our first video the immediate tie off is this one right here so again there's your needle down pattern restart start to back at the beginning and this one is your immediate tie off I want to tie off now I don't want to wait it until the end and then I'm going to go ahead and press my scissor cut okay and then There it is. So you see what I mean? How it gets just a very nice, nice dimension. And you could do all sorts of things with this. I've used just a green one, the, the kite tail, on a, a applique kite. I used that as my, my tail. And I played with the length a little bit to stretch it out. So you can alter these a bit using your stitch width and length controls as well. So this was the uh, category 
seven, I believe it was, category seven. No, I'm sorry, category eight. It's category eight, techniques. And uh, so we showed you the lace, the radiant, the, the single, double, and twin, uh, triple ribbon. Um, I think the floating stitches, those were everything in this category. All right. Uh, when you're ready to learn something new, go ahead and go to one of our other videos. And thank you for joining us.